mercy. As we spoke of our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever, and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but when you're reading this and it begins to magnify God and make God great, and she quotes about 17 attributes of God and 15 texts of the Old Testament in these 10 verses. And all of a sudden it just stops. I believe that it's like that for a reason, not an accident. We're supposed to continue that song. We're supposed to continue that singing. We're supposed to lift up and magnify God. And so this evening, it's Christmas Eve. We're celebrating the birth of the Christ child. This holy babe born in a manger. Did you ever wonder why? Why would he be born in a manger of all things? You know, as a little child, that, that was a city girl. You know, I didn't know. I was never in, around animals other than, you know, pets and things, a goldfish. So I really didn't know what a manger was. I thought a manger was a little crib. I thought that's what it meant, that he was born in a little crib. But that's not what a manger is. Do you know? How many of you know what it is? You, you know? You know? You know? Okay. Well, we people who know nothing, I knew nothing. I didn't know. And so when I realized it was, it's a little feeding trough, right? It's where the animals eat, and it's not a very pleasant place, and you wouldn't put a child in there. But I guess they had no choice. Why would he do that? Why would he be born in a manger? Why would there be no room for him in, the, in an inn? If he's our God, our Lord, and our Savior, if the world was hearing of him from generation to generation, why weren't they ready? Why weren't they looking? Why did he have to come another way? Why? And the only thing that I can imagine was that there is no one anywhere in the world that can think that God would ever reject them because he knows our frame. And whether it's because of your social estate, mental estate, physical estate, emotional estate, it doesn't matter where you are or how you got there, Jesus came for you. Isn't that amazing? Amen. So this evening, as we celebrate communion, you know, sometimes when we have communion, we play music kind of like this, and we get very somber, very repentant. That's a good thing, by the way. Very repentant, very somber, very serious. It is serious. But I do believe that God wants us to rejoice tonight. He wants us to sing. He wants us to rejoice. He wants us to celebrate because the Christ child is born. If these people expecting the Christ child were singing, the first thing they did, I don't believe they really kind of like wound up to sing. You know how can you wind yourself up to sing? You're going to sing now? Especially when you sing by yourself, you know, when nobody's around. And you really sing and you, you feel like you're karate or something, you know. And you know you're off key, but you don't care because it's you and you sound good. And so, you know, you kind of want, I don't think that's what happened. I think what happened was the Holy Spirit fell on them and all of a sudden this revolution from the inside just came shooting out, yeah, like that. And their mouth opened and all this great stuff came out because of what was about to happen. If that was the prelude, what about now? We are this side of the cross and we have Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit. And this Christmas season has to be like no other. We're about to step into the year 2014. Oh my God. Double portion. Double seven. Thank you, God. Total restoration. God's bringing it all back. But better than ever, in Jesus' name. How many of you are prepared? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Thank you, Jesus. Are you going to sing this? Okay. He's going to sing that.
stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. We want our souls to magnify you. 
We want our, our hearts, Lord God, to soar with you. That's what we want. And this is a night to fill this place with music. It's a night, Father God, to extol your greatness. Lift up your holy name. It's a time, Lord God, where we're going to take all of our burdens and hang them on a tree. We're going to take, Lord God, all of our fears and hang them on a tree. We're going to take, Father God, any sicknesses and hang them on a tree. We're going to take, Lord God, those things that keep us down and hang them on a tree. In Jesus' name, if you did all of this for us, 